What's up everyone? Today we're turning an old vintage wash stand into an aged old world beauty. I started by taking it all apart and trying to figure out all the repairs I will have to make. There's some cracks needed to be fixed, so I brought out the wood paddy first. There was plenty of holes and cracks to be filled in because as I said, this piece was really antique and beat up. Like they had no mercy on this piece. Like people have mercy on your furniture. Come on. <laughs> The backboard had a huge piece of wood missing here, so I had to fill in the broken area as well. Once all the wood filler was dry, it needed some sanding. Lots and lots of sanding. And this was the first time during this project I was questioning if this is all worth it. Like, it was kind of tough. I was sending this piece and it was dancing away on the stage, like moving away from me. So I just wanted to toss it in the backyard and forget about it. But I can't because I'm saving old furniture. So I had to keep on sending. and some shaping for the chunk we filled in as well. This project started with a lot of prep work, and I mean a lot of prep work, like a lot, like, like, I wanted to throw it away a lot, kind of work. Now we can get onto the cleaning so we can start painting this piece. So let's clean. I'm going to cover this piece with shellac to be safe and make sure I don't get any bleed through. Bleed through is a big problem with dark and red wood, so it's better to be safe than sorry. Like anytime I feel like a piece might have a bleed through, I just shellac it or I prime it. So that's what I did. Usually I use Zinsser Primer with shellac, but I was out of it. So I just grabbed my regular shellac and it did its job. Then I glued the holding pieces for the back stand. I don't even know what these are called, but I think they were uh, holders for soaps or something like that because this is a wash stand. So I imagine that those were uh, little shelves for soaps. I imagine, I have no idea. Once I put everything back together, I decided to uh, make some molds to give this piece some more character. It needed something a little extra. I used equal parts of amazing casting resin for this. It's pretty easy and quick to do. I added these molds to the front top of the wash stand. For my color, I wanted to use a Louis blue with a white layer underneath. So I started with original white. Mm -hmm. 
Because this piece is old and full of bumps and wear and tear, I'm adding extra texture by tapping my paint. This will blend in all the little nicks and bumps and make it look like it all belongs together. Once that was dry, I started tapping on my Louis Blue, adding texture with it as well. I'm going for a layered look, so I left a little corners showing white underneath. At this point, I probably so far wanted to toss this piece away three times. First time because it was uh, dancing when I was sending it, then it needed so much repair and cleaning, and then I started painting it and I'm like, I don't even know where I'm going with this. So I questioned myself during this project. I then decided to use a cocoa wash for another layer of aging. I did this by watering down my paint and applying it everywhere, then wiping it off immediately. I was practically not really wiping it away. I was more doing a tapping technique where I was just tapping with a cloth and that way it all looked uneven and layered. Uh, when you use a wiping technique and going back and forth, you create lines. So I saved that for some other uh, designs. This is the same way you apply a stain and you can make this as heavy as you want or as light as you want. The color wash technique is controlled by you. If you want more stronger look, add less water. If you want a lighter wash, add more water. It's totally up to you where you wanna go with this. I like to make the corners darker, so I'll go back with a little extra wash in those areas. This is such an easy way to create all that extra character and add old world finish to your pieces because we are doing aging here. We want it to look aged, but in a pretty way because it was looking aged in a bad way. To add some more character, I grab my uh, script stencil, by example, Prima and stencil inside the doors. I wanted for the stencil to have the same feeling of old world finish, so I just added a cocoa on stencil somewhere more and somewhere less, and that way I created an even look because we're going for that look. Okay. Right. The inside is a little too orange for me and I also use uh, some wood filler there as well. So I decided to create a nice contrast and use Oxford Navy color. That should work beautiful with our outside color and I really love how it turned out. The contrast between these two colors is just so pretty. Neck sanding for some distressing. And some people will say distressed furniture is out of style. Well, 
distressed furniture is not a trend. Uh, it might come in and out of the trend, but distressed furniture style is a style. It's been a style and it will be a style. So some people love it and it's definitely a technique that is just always there for you to use when you feel like you want to age your pieces. This brings our colors out and adds even more that vintage old world feel. This is totally personal preference, how much you want to do it, but I definitely like to keep my distressing light. Just a little bit to show that those layers underneath. Look at all this character. It's just gorgeous and it looks old, but in a nice way old. For protection, I'm using Anis Long Clear Wax to give it that authentic matte finish. Just run it in into the wood and then wipe off all the extra with a cheesecloth or a microfiber cloth. I haven't used a cheesecloth in a really long time, but that's how I started and I really love using cheesecloth. I just forgot to buy it, like for the last two years. <laughs> For the final touch to tie everything together, let's add some gold. I'm using my favorite gold gilding wax, Color Eternal. The details on this piece are large enough that I can use my finger for most of the gilding. I didn't want to put too much. I was trying kind of to keep that old world finish. So I was just kind of applying my gold wax uneven, a little bit uneven, not going really heavy with my finger. I probably like to add too much gold on everything, but can you really add too much gold? Like, is there such a thing as too much gold? I don't think so. At the end of the day, it's your project and you do whatever makes you happy, not me. Even though I'll prefer if you use gold. <laughs> was done. I was so happy I ended up finishing this piece because as I said, I wanted to toss it away a few times, but that's not what we do here. We save furniture from the landfill and we give it new homes. So I just kept playing with it and I kept playing until I thought it looked great. My goal with this piece was to keep it old because it is old and I can't deny it, but I wanted to make it pleasant to your eye, to anybody's eye. And I really love layers and old world finish. I said this before a few times. I don't know how many. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time with a new project and more ideas. And next time I'm going pink. Bye.